This is the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast 2022 Tournament. We have two brackets of 16 players. On one side, eight of the BTP Patreon members. On the other side, eight Benchwarmers. Each side will crown a champion, and those champions will face off against each other to find out who will be the 2022 winner of the Platinum Splinter, proving once and for all that they are not an ordinary Benchwarmer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast, sports trivia for those of us who wrote the pine. I am not your host, Matt, but today's game will be round one of the 2022 BTP tournament, and this match will be pitting our patrons and beloved guests, Alex Spider versus Byron Grubman. Let's go over to Alex first. I think I either always get your name correct or I always screw it up, but I don't care. At this point, you said your name 14 times in this podcast, so I'll just go ahead and say... Alex, uh, what is your favorite thing about living in, uh, you live in Missouri, right? Or do you live mm-hmm. in Can- uh, in Missouri? What's Southwest your favorite Missouri, thing yeah. about living in Missouri? Oh, man. I like to joke. I grew up in Kansas, so I like to joke with people that I live in misery. I mean, Missouri. So. <laughs> As a Wichita just... boy right here. Sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, I love, we're, we live just an hour north of the Ozarks and it's a lot of cool places to go hiking and do the wildlife thing outside so it's really not too bad it's hot and humid down here all the time including today and where i grew up it was hot and dry and windy so it took a while to get used to but yeah i love it down here it's more my pace of life than the big city life so there you go and uh byron i know that you uh were raised in texas or no raised in california um and been around and live in texas now and my question for you is is why are the san francisco giants suck so much lately what's going on over there i don't i'm gonna ask you nothing about geography or where you live or why you love where you live i'm gonna ask you a random sports thing so last year 100 and what seven wins was a fluke I knew at the time, I knew we weren't going to get past the Dodgers in the 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 division series. You focus on now, not the past. Come on now. And I was getting to to now, which is (laughs) now we pay the toll. We, you know, we had really timely hitting last season. None of that this season. We had really good bullpen work, just atrocious this season. Um, And so, yeah, we had to pay the piper. Jock Peterson was a nice ad. He's been very entertaining, but um yeah, we, I love how you, you took know, it, my joke. You took my joke question and you made it serious, right? I was trying to I, mainly just give you a hard time, but you, you like chef kiss to you for for doing that. I appreciate that. So, well, you asked it on the right night because we're playing the Dodgers on Sunday Night Baseball, and I'm pretty sure we're losing. I haven't checked the score since about the third inning, but um, every time my team plays the Dodgers, they lose. So, yeah, I know that. Yeah, but we, uh, yeah, just disappointing. I was invested in the wild card till about two weeks ago when we just like we couldn't beat you know well couldn't be the twins yeah yeah <laughs> uh, of all the teams oh my gosh all right let's move forward because i do not want my twins to make the playoffs because they're just going to get swept in the first round anyway so and without further ado uh the host of this year's btp tournament is none other than the famous and the infamous ryan myers who will explain our rules and uh, run us through the game so I'll hand it over to you ryan thank you sir appreciate all yeah, the time and effort and there you go. Glad to be here. Um, gents, this is going to be straightforward. I was thinking about what I wanted in a champion of sports trivia. and I think if you're going to be a real sports trivia champ, you can't coast by on one or two categories you're really good at. So you're going to get 12 different categories. And we're going to test how well-rounded you are in this first round. Uh, the formats will change in rounds two and three, which I've not said in the previous episodes. So... Without further ado, which is not the correct word in that situation, we're going to go through these questions. We're going to just go through through these categories alphabetically. So we're going to start with baseball. Make sure your chat is messaging me directly. And we'll start with question number one. In order to make standing room and space for a new restaurant, Tall's Hill was removed from which ballpark in 2016? And I'm looking for a ballpark. Okay, um, okay. answers are in. Um, Alexander, you turned your answer in second, so you get the distinct privilege of answering first. What did you say? Yeah, I think this was the Houston Astros Park with that slope or hill, I guess, in the center field. And I think it was called or is called Minute Maid. 
ballparks. Right. That was my guess. Minute made. Minute made. And answering almost immediately was Byron. Byron, what'd you say? So a little bit of background. I subbed in for last week's Benchwarmers recording, and this was a question on it. And I also the uh, you know inclusion of the word space in the uh, in the question. Uh, yeah, it's the Astros ballpark, Minute Maid Park. Minute Maid Park is correct. Very well done, you two. Uh, we are going to move very unsurprisingly from baseball to basketball, since this is alphabetical. When Mike Krzyzewski played college basketball from 1966 to 69, who was his head coach? Again, when Coach K played college basketball from 1966 to 69, who was his head coach? All right, answers are in. Alex, you answered second, so you're going to get to go again. What did you have? Yeah, if I remember right, I think Coach K played at Army, and I think Bob Knight was his coach. But if that's not it, then then I have no shot at getting it. So I put Bob Knight. And Byron? I was along the very same line of thinking. I remember seeing a doc about Coach K back I don't know, early 2000s that he played at Army, and I'm fairly certain Bobby Knight was attached in some way, so I put Bobby Knight. Before becoming a legend at Indiana, Bob Knight coached at Army. Bob Knight is correct. Well done. Uh, We are moving from basketball to combat sports. Beating the tar out of each other. Your question is, Though they were written by Welsh sportsman John Graham Chambers, it was John Sholto Douglas's endorsement of them that made them take off and become commonly accepted. What was Douglas's best known title? He was the ninth person to hold this title. All right, answers are in. Um, Alex, what did you say for this one? <laughs> this is not my wheelhouse. Uh, I know very little about this, and I, I tried to figure out the clue in a short amount of time, but since I don't know, I just threw out a silly answer and I said Duke of Edinburgh. So. <laughs> and Byron. So thank goodness it was a boxing question and not an MMA question because boxing is more my wheelhouse. But I believe the rules for modern boxing are the Marcus of Queensbury rules. It is the Marquess of Queensbury. Very well done. Was it modernized boxing and gave us gloves and ended the bare knuckle era? Moving on from combat sports, we're going to go to football gridiron style with over 400 more than second place Rashad Jones who is the all-time leading tackler in Miami Dolphins history with 1042 tackles all right answers are in uh Alex you were in second so what did you say and Byron you're fast here so I was trying to think of that linebacker that played for the Dolphins forever I'm, I'm afraid I I'm guessing his name wrong but is it Zach Thomas and Byron. The only reason I was quick on this one is because there's really only one longtime Dolphins defensive player that I know, and I'm fairly certain he has their sack record, but I don't know about total tackles. I guess Jason Taylor. Both members of that inimitable, indistinguishable, marvelous, uh, indistinguishable is not the right word, Dolphins D from the early 2000s. The correct answer is Zach Thomas. Good pull. Well pulled, Alex. Very well done. All right, going on to the worst category of this round, it's going to be golf. Established in 1972, which European golf tournament very recently became the first co-sanctioned PGA Tour event to take place in Europe? Coming just a week before the Open Championship, it will drastically affect the level of talent seen at both events. Mind you that this was uh, written months ago, so ignore the present tense. All right, uh, Byron, you were in second. What did you say? I'm fairly certain this takes place the week before the Open because I've just heard of guys going over there to play in this event as like a tune-up for the Open Championship. I think it's the Scottish Open. Scottish Open. And Alex? Yeah, I've been following golf a lot more closely over the last year or two, and uh, I'm quite certain this is the Scottish Open. Yeah. It is indeed the Scottish Open. Very well done, you two. It's either that or the John Deere Classic, which is <laughs> how I, I forgot who qualified in the John Deere Classic and went on to win the, the Open Championship. But that's the only reason I know it takes place the week before. Was that Cameron Smith? May, no, no, no. Well, it, was this like, year, no. Yeah. it was like oh, okay. 10 or 12 years ago, somebody qualified in the John Deere and then won the Open Championship. Sorry, gotcha. so wait now. Are, are we saying that the John Deere Classic is played in Europe? 
No, no, no. That, that's in like <laughs> he was making that's a joke. Like yeah. Texas somewhere, but yeah. My answer was been, the Scottish Open. <laughs> that would have been awesome because you know, just wait. Just I mean, there's a ton of land to you know to till out there. John Deere might have yeah, a, a when I think of like the French rolling, you know, uh, countryside. I think of John Deere tractors, of right? Course, right? Yeah. That's 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 John Deere. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, the the Ian Deere Championship. All right, um, moving on from G to H, golf to hockey. Boys, which 18-year-old Slovenian was taken first overall by the Canadiens in this year's NHL entry draft? All right, um, Byron, what did you say here? I was trying to recall it. I remembered hearing the name, and I it was a very, very long Eastern European name, and I think it's something like Slavovsky. As close as I can and get to it. Alex? Yeah, I had no guess. I, I'm a Fairweather Avalanche fan, so I've watched uh, some of their games, but I did not follow the draft at all, so I really don't know who it is. Either. Really R.I.P. Byron on this, because this is tragic. It's uh, Juraj Slavkovsky. God dang it. <laughs> Neither of you guessed Luka Doncic, so I'm very proud of you. <laughs> um, also, the Avs are the greatest team of all time, so... Uh, we're going to move on. Big jump in the alphabet here from H to O. We're going to the Olympics. Which Dutch person became the most successful speed skater of all time at the most recent Olympics? She's won an individual gold medal in every Winter Olympics dating back to Turin in 2006. Alrighty. Um, Byron, you're in second. What did you say? I probably should have known this. I watched the last winter olympics uh but the only dutch name that was coming to mind is the apple dorns so i guess apple dorn apple dorn and alex yeah i i have no idea who it is and i couldn't come up with any clever funny answer so i just said i don't know that's fair her name is irene vust v-u-s-t or w-u-s-t i'm very sorry w-u-s-t irene vust with an umlaut or diuresis over the u all right, well, I didn't give an update after the sixth one here, so I'll give an update on the score after the seventh question. Sure. So uh, both um, competitors are tied at four correct answers yeah. after the seventh. So with five remaining, it is a close game. We love to see it. Gentlemen, we're going to racing for this next category. Ashley, Brittany, and Courtney are all professional racers who just so happen to be the daughters of what legendary dominant racer? All right, answers are in. Byron, what would you say on this one? I couldn't place, you know, really anything, so I just went with a dominant uh, racing family and said Unser. You said Unser and Alex. Yeah, I tried the same route. I uh, figured Mario was too old and I know of Marco Andretti, so I was hoping Marco had three sisters named Courtney, Brittany, and Ashley. So I said Michael Andretti. Uh, these are all very dominant racers on the funny car circuit. It's John Force. That's certainly a name. <laughs> it's one of the tougher questions. Yeah, John Force. All right, uh, next one. What category is it? Because I don't remember. I bet it's soccer. It's soccer. All right, your question. While the Hand of God goal is the more memorable and bitter of the two, what nickname was given to Diego Maradona's other goal against England at the 1986 World Cup? The nickname was bestowed upon the goal by FIFA itself. All right, Alex, you were in second. What did you say? Yeah, again, I don't know, and I venture to guess this time. I I guessed Golden Toe, but seems unlikely. Golden Toe. Byron, what did you have? So the only other... Aside from the hand of God goal that I know, I didn't know it was associated, or I don't know if it's associated with Maradona, but I thought it might be the goal of the century. Goal of the century. This was uh, Maradona basically dribbling through the entirety of England's team, and it is called the goal of the century. Well done. Very well done. All right, um, we're going to go into the most distinctive category, I personally think, as it is a big part of sports culture. We're talking about sports media. So it could be movies, TV, radio, podcast, anything in that kind of media sphere. Casting a wide net. 
Yes, your sports media question. As was inevitable, like when Deadspin was acquired by Geo Media, the writers of The Athletic were told to stick to sports and avoid politics this last June after being purchased by what larger publication? You were both in immediately, and I'm just going to tell you, yes, your guesses of the New York Times are correct. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it, I was hoping you didn't know this one, because I knew no, it immediately. I, I, I follow Defector quite closely, and I follow union organization or you know quite okay. closely and there's a big um like kind of labor uprising mm-hmm. in the new york times and a big part of that was that hey you have all this money to go purchase the athletic and purchase all these things but you can't kick down a few more bucks to the guys that are writing for you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um next category is going to be tennis how many more do we have two left or uh i think yeah, that's this one plus another one. Okay. All right, Give us a score question. update. Oh, well, oh no, yeah. So dramatic. Byron's <laughs> okay. got me by one. I think so. All right. Um, tennis. Which Austrian company specializing in ski wear and snowboarding is perhaps best known in the U.S. for manufacturing tennis rackets? All right. Answers are in. Byron, what did you have? For me, it was between Yonix and Head, and I'm fairly certain I've seen more Head branding on uh, ski wear so i went with head and alex yeah, i was trying to picture the tennis rackets and i watched a little bit of the u.s open with my dad when i was visiting him and I, so i went with head as well because i think that's what i remember seeing and it is head very well done you two our last one is not alphabetical it is just miscellaneous miscellaneous miscellany stuff things that didn't quite fit into the other categories i had defined Your question is, India has beaten Iran in the finals of all three World Cups of what sport held in 2004, 2007, and 2016? This sport requires a player called a, quote, raider to go into the other team's half court and tag as many people as they can while holding their breath and avoiding being tackled. All right, Byron, you were in second. What'd you say? That sounds a lot like, well, doesn't sound a lot like, but it sounds close enough to capture the flag, that that's the closest thing that I could put with it. That's a good guess. Um, Alex? Yeah, I had a similar thought, but I, I really didn't know the answer. And I don't have a good guess again, so not a very dramatic ending. But oh, The answer is Kabaddi, K-A-B-A-D-D-I, which is also what they have to yell during the match. Hmm. While holding their breath, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 wild. It's ridiculous <laughs> to watch. Um, ridiculous in a fun way, not in a mocking way. All right, so that is that. Matt, what do you have? Yes, so the final score is that I have. Uh, Alex, with a respectable five, and that seemed like a very uh, tough game uh, from the ones that we've had so far. So, yeah, so respectable five, but today's winner... We'll be moving on to the next round will be Byron Grubman with a score of six. So, yeah, so that's great. So, uh, Byron, you'll be continuing on. So let's hear from Alex real quick. So, Alex. Hey, good game, Byron. Final Uh, words. Best of luck to you moving forward. I think my wife's relieved that I didn't win. I'll be (laughs) more available to change diapers and do dishes now. And there you go. And Byron. Yeah, I had to. You know, I'm glad I won and I had to kind of, you know, redeem myself for losing to apparently the ringer who was it was his first time on the podcast when we did the tournament last year and David Fudor went on to win the tournament. Yeah. And so, yeah, I redeemed myself. I'm on to the second round. I feel good about it. And just always a good time hanging out with you guys. Yeah, agreed. All right. So and uh Ryan, any, uh, this was, a. Uh, I think of the three that we've recorded so far, so I'm not sure. I assume this is going to go out in the same order that we've recorded them, but I, this one was a tough one. You had a lot of, there was a, a yeah, this one played a bit tougher and I don't think it's because of the players. Questions. I think it was just tougher questions. Yeah. Yeah. Three questions in a row where neither, neither contestants got the answer. That was crazy. So that's rough. Yeah. But the New York times one, that one, both guys knew that right away. So. <laughs> it was so fast. Yeah, they need to ask these questions of the bench warmers. Give us the easier ones. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> give the tough yes. ones. To the Send these guys. questions to Ed. Like, give, yeah, give exactly. Ed these questions when he competes. Come on. <laughs> Minus All the right. hockey one. Go way back for that one. <laughs> there you go. 
All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for your time tonight. Thank you, Ryan, for writing this awesome game. I certainly appreciate all your guys' time and your effort. And uh, thank you all for listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. And until next time, we'll keep the bench warm. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Stretch. Get on back there. They look up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we'll see you tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Benchwarmers TP.